Welcome to Essential Ingredients, powered by Next Gen Purpose. EI serves up thoughtful conversations with industry leaders and pioneers who support a regenerative future for our food system. The stories shared by our guests are meant to spark curiosity and inspire informed global change. Welcome to Essential Ingredients. I'm your host, Justine Reichman. Today with me is Sean Bannon. He is a documentary filmmaker. And today we are here to talk about the smell of money and learn more about him. Welcome, Sean. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate being on your program. I'm so excited to learn more about you and the smell of money. And um, this is coming out next week already. And it's uh, this is a little prelude and a little special uh, insight and uh, guest guest um, appearance before the Mindful Eating Film Festival that's coming up. So we're so pleased to have you here to learn more about you and what we can expect to see at the film festival. So tell us a little bit about yourself so our audience can get to know you. Okay, so I'm a documentary filmmaker. I've been making films for, you know, 15 or so years, uh, usually with an environmental theme of some kind. Lots of do a lot of animal rights work. I've actually filmed up in Marin several times with Miyoko. I've filmed animal rescues and I filmed her cheese factory, which has been really cool. And uh, this movie, though, I went out to North Carolina and filmed over the course of four years. And it. Um, so I think you know, why animals? Why are you so, you know, you're, you talk a lot about animals and about farming. You know, how did you get into that space? I mean, I've been vegan now for about 26 years. <laughs> so a long time. That's a while. <laughs> yeah, a very long time. And uh, it's something I, I, you know, when I went to film school, I became vegan at the same time. So my filmmaking and my activism kind of started at the same exact time. But you know, early on, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't living in a bubble. So I always try to balance out my filmmaking and not just do activist work. <laughs> um, it's it's not always easy to do that. So uh, I get kind of swept up in doing my activist work. And I but it's also can be very challenging because, you know, these are very I've done investigations. I've worked on, you know, even very intense uh factory farming, going into factory farms and filming, open investigations. I've filmed elephant uh, cruelty, all these kinds of things over the years, and it's very challenging. So I, I do go and try to actively film very fun and entertaining stuff as well to take a break every once in a while, because uh, this kind of work can be exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so what came first, the, the, um, the desire to be a vegan? the desire to activate for it or the desire to film to connect the two? I mean, filming came first for me and it's just when I was researching doing a film about animal experimentation. I, I, was, I was actually a vegetarian before I became a filmmaker. So I kind of had an interest in activism. So I guess technically activism did come first for me. But my filmmaking, you know, I, I just didn't connect at all until I was really making my first film and like researching about animal experimentation. I just went like kind of vegan overnight. <laughs> so that's kind of the beginning. And then it's just been, it's, I, I was really a hardcore vegan, like right away, like overnight. My mom was just so like angry because she had made like all this banana bread, like my favorite banana <laughs> bread. <laughs> I was just like, sorry, mom what can I do it was like the next day she's like what are you talking about so but she understood and uh you know it, it's been uh it's been amazing ever since it's just one of those things like you know 26 years later my the reasons I'm vegan now are so different than the reasons I started being vegan in the first place like I, I'm glad I'm still vegan but now like living this lifestyle for so long it's just just everything's changed so much over that time period was there, was there like a, a couple of things that you learned through your investigation that really impacted you that to make that decision? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I was so passionate about uh, the animals early on. And it's one of those things, I think, when you witness it in person, it's, you know, I don't want to talk about it because I will get emotional about it. And I am one of those people that once I start getting emotional, it's hard for me to stop. And uh, I, it's being emotional about animal stuff is one of those. I think the hardest thing is to know society is not emotional as a whole about animal issues. And that's one thing I've learned is like, 
and to understand why that is. And I think that's been the hardest thing, like to understand, like I get, you know, I understand why humans now as a culture, um, American culture, uh, you know, is very distant from factory farming and how our culture can look the other way, but we also love our companion animals. That was something early on that was very hard for me to deal with. I think now it's, I understand why that is. And uh, it's frustrating, but it's like, I can't live, you know, with that kind of pain all the time. So right now, a lot of my work I do, I try to focus on these huge major corporations and not individuals, you know, I'm spending a lot of my time focused on individuals at some point. And that's where I feel like you get really burned out and stuff, like trying to make every single person, you know, like go vegan and stuff. It can be but, very I mean, challenging. It's, <laughs> it's really, really hard. And I think, yeah. you know, so I'm curious, so do you, Tell me the the objective of your films. Is it what's the biggest objective you have in creating these films or producing these films? I mean, with the smell of money specifically, it's about communities in North Carolina that are impacted by factory environment. So it's really like not talking about the conditions for the animals themselves, and that's you know we started filming over four years ago now, and that's you know the time where I'm like, okay, now I'm not just vegan for the animals i'm also vegan for humans and i i recognize that you know being compassionate for humans is also just very very important and being understanding of like the conditions that people are living in and the oppression that is going on in american culture as well and just understanding that like food choices and food access and you know economic decisions that people have is is can be very challenging for people so that's that's one of the biggest lessons i learned filming in north carolina is like you know you're filming in communities where a lot of people don't you know are living off of well water mm -hmm. still so if their wells get contaminated by hog waste pollution and they have to you know drink that water like what's the alternative for them like that's pretty insane and you have a billion dollar corporation saying, no, we didn't pollute that water. Right. Like it's pretty, it's pretty insane. So some of those communities have access now, like they piped in water, but now those residents have to pay for that water. And that, that economic, you know, that, that can really impact community that's survived and been able to grow their own vegetables and grow their own food now has to pay for those resources where they were self-sufficient for decades and decades. The Mindful Eating Film Festival examines the problems created by our modern agricultural systems and encourages participants to consider how our consumer and dietary choices impact climate change, the environment, our health, and the animals with whom we share the planet. Proceeds from the event will support over 90 rescued sanctuary animals residing at Rancho Compassion and dozens of students and community members through Rancho Compassion's humane education and visitor programs. Well, so when you initially, you screened this film before, or is this going yeah. to be? Yeah, so we, we premiered at Sarasota in April, and we, we won the jury award, which is really exciting for us. And then we had our I international think. premiere at Hot Docs in Canada, which is North America's biggest documentary film festival, and we got the top five audience award, so that was really exciting. So we've had those. So this will be our West Coast premiere at Mindful Eating Film Festival. So that's very exciting. And so what, I'm just curious. So when you premiered this um, in those communities, what was some of the responses that you got? I, I feel like in Canada, hot docs, um, it's been very emotional. We've been lucky where community members have been at the screenings. And I think for people to, to meet people impacted by these industries and to sit next to them, you know, it changes you forever, honestly. Filming in these communities changes you forever. Um, it's it's something I do just, you do have to see the movie. I, I can't really explain it to you. Well, I'm hoping to see <laughs> Briefly. it at the festival next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those things. So um, we, we are having a screening the week after, like with all the community members in North Carolina. Otherwise we would have brought people out to the Mindful Eating Festival, but it was just too challenging with the tight turnaround. Because um, it is a, a big screening in North Carolina just for community members. Um, and it's just a lot to ask them to travel because a lot of them do. Or, a lot of people in the film have 
different health issues, which you'll see when you're watching the movie, which is a big part of the movie. Because you know the the pollution, the air pollution, the water pollution, it's something that a lot of the residents have been living with for decades now. And there's just has not been a good solution to clean up these issues. So that's really what we're trying to do is not just shine a light on this, but to motivate people to motivate change, say, hey, look, you know, where your food comes from, you know, we have a decision, all of us have a decision, but it's like even individual choices aren't enough, we do need to change laws, like we need to, you know, work together to get laws changed in this country to protect people and the environment. Wow. Well, I am certainly looking forward to seeing this film next week. So um, are there, are there, with all the other things going on at this film festival next week, I'm sure you've looked at the list of other films coming up. What are you most looking forward to seeing as well? Goodness. I mean, a, a lot of the other films I've actually seen already. So <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of documentaries. So I've watched all of them, but I, um, I'm just excited to go to the festival. I'm excited to, to meet the other filmmakers and talk to them. And I know the food I'm really coming, I'm coming for like Miyoko's <laughs> food and just yeah. hanging out with everybody and getting to chat and uh, being in the same space as everybody is really, really important and talking about the movies and uh, you, you know, the area too is just a beautiful part of this country. And I love going to Northern California and I just, you know, Miyoko is so awesome. She's been super inspiring and I, I hope to visit her sanctuary up there too. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, it's, she, she's very close to me, so I'm looking forward to going to do that soon too. So, so for those that want to check out what you've worked on in the past, um, what you're going to be working on in the future, and just learn about this project a little bit more, how might they go find you online? Um, the best option for the movie is smellofmoneydoc.com. We have an Instagram as well and a Twitter, which are the same uh, URL. And for personal, it's seanbannon.com or go to my Vimeo account, which is Sean Bannon at Vimeo, I believe, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll, put, we'll make sure to put it in the show notes. Yeah. We'll, we'll go yeah. through and make sure. So, cool. Shannon, uh, Sean, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm excited to meet you next week at the film festival. And for those that are not familiar with the smell of money, go check it out. And uh, we're excited to uh, see this film festival next week. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, make sure uh, to check out the calendar, check out what's going on. There's a lot of great stuff going on at the film festival from Rancho Compassion and the list of films that will be screening and all the panels. So Sean, thanks again for sharing a little bit about you and a little bit about the film and what we can expect. Cool. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate having me on today. Yeah. And I want to thank our guests for tuning in, whether you're watching the podcast or you're listening to uh, turning, uh, whether it's the video cast or the podcast. So we'll see you again. Cool. Soon. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sean. To learn more about these episodes and access show notes, go to nextgenpurpose.com and choose podcast. If you like this episode, head to Apple podcast or your favorite platform to subscribe and leave us a review. Visit the Next Gen Purpose YouTube channel to subscribe to our EI videocast and give this episode a like while you're there. Follow us on Instagram and LinkedIn at Next Gen Purpose and connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram at Justine underscore Reichman. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.